Das Radikal. Politics and controversy often walk hand in hand. By its very nature, it is almost impossible to be a head of state, leader of men, or statesman of some sorts without also having some controversy to your name. After all, it is the idea, at least in mo modern democracies, that not everybody can agree on the infallibility of one's leader. One man's tyrant can at the same, be same time be viewed as another's savior. In Icelandic contemporary politics, there is probably no politician that has gained as much notoriety and word of controversy as one Sigmund David Gunnlaugsson. You may have probably heard of him, even if you don't live in, I in Iceland, because, well, he is pretty infamous. On January 18th this year, just a few days ago, it marked 10 years since Sigmund first became the leader of the Progressive Party. And in this video I just wanted to make a rundown of his life and his political career, and in order to ex better explain just how he became the man he is today, and how he became to be viewed as the man that he is viewed as today. So buckle up, this video is about the amazing yet controversial story of former Prime Minister Sigmund David Gunnlaugsson. Every good story must obviously begin at the, well, beginning, so let us first go back in time. Far, far back in time. 1916 also saw the creation of the Progressive Party, Framsóknarflokkurinn. The Framsóknarflokkur Okay, was... stop. That's a bit too far. Anyway, Sigmund David Gunnlaugsson was born on March 12th, 1975, and he grew up in Breitholt, which is where I live. Which is probably the only thing that he and I have in common. Sigmund's father was Gunnlaugur M. Sigmundsson, who was an MP for the Progressive Party during the 1990s. Sigmund graduated from Menta School in Reykjavik, uh, the College of Reykjavik, in 1995, and he earned a degree in business from the university in Iceland in 2005. During his time in university, he also studied media. During his university years and after, he was also involved uh, in uh, city politics of Reykjavik, however, at the time he was not yet a member of the Progressive Party. He, Sigmund, uh, interestingly enough, only became a member of the Progressive Party in, back in 2009, just a short while before he became its chairman. Okay, I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself, so in order to tell his story, I also need to tell the story of the Progressive Party, at least in the decades before Sigmund David Gunnlaugsson. So the Progressive Party, or Framsóknarflokkurinn, is a center-right agrarian populist party, say that three times fast, and it's currently the oldest political party in Iceland. Now. In 1995, the Progressive Party formed a coalition government uh, with the uh, Independence Party, which is Iceland's largest conservative party, well, only current conservative party, and, uh, the, and the government that was formed in 1995 under the leadership of one uh, David Otson, Iceland's longest serving prime minister, is, has often been called the privatization administration. It ran from 1995 until 2007, three terms. The only out of two Icelandic uh, parliamentary administrations that has lasted for that long. Now, the privatization administration, well, obviously was involved with a lot of privatization. In the years and decades before 1995, the Icelandic government had actually kind of outgrown itself, or at least for its own good. It had become too involved in people's individual affairs, at least uh, that is the consensus among uh, everyone except the far left in Iceland, but I don't want to make this uh, video too complicated. Yeah, but basically, the years before the, the uh, privatization administration was formed, 
were marked with a lot of economic unrest and it was linked to mainly the uh, the various government institutions be, uh, being too large and without having without uh, gaining much revenue and thus the state was constantly losing money and uh, therefore unable to keep up all its basic services like social welfare and such so the privatization administration uh, uh, was uh, an attempt to liberalize Iceland and to uh, basically free up the government to, to perform its most vital tasks while privatizing a lot of the institutions that had once been under direct government jurisdictions. Among these institutions were banks. The privatization administration was, if, was in fact very successful. At least the economy grew and employment uh, grew down to, uh, I think at its lowest point, 1.3%, and uh, people generally seem to have a very positive outlook on the future of this country. So when David Otson left office, he was, uh, uh, he was seen as a highly uh, successful prime minister. Now eventually the privatization and deregulation of the uh, country's various uh, financial institutions got way out of control. You know what's coming next. Cue the riots! So in 2008 the Icelandic economy and our banking system collapsed. Iceland faced its most severe political crisis in, well, very, actually one of the largest crises in our history overall, I'd say. And the Progressive Party was in a pretty bad state at the time. They had lost a lot of its seats uh, during local elections in 2006, and they had also p severely underperformed during the, during the 2007 parliamentary election. By now they were no longer uh, in government, uh, because uh, the Social Democrats had gained ground and formed a coalition with the Conservative Independence Party. And this is where Sigmundur finally enters the picture. Sigmundur did join the Progressive Party and on January 18th, 2009, after having been a party member for only a month, he was sworn in as the new party chairman of the Progressive Party. One of his first acts as chairman was to support uh, the leader of the Social Democrats, Johanna Seuradotir, in order to form a minority government with the left greens until official elections could be held uh, the following April. This he did and uh, on January 30th the administration of, uh, of Geir Harte, uh, who was, uh, who was uh, out of the uh, independence party resigned and Johanna Seuradotir took over with her minority government which was able to form in an effective majority at the time because uh, because, uh, because even though the Progressive Party was not a part of this uh, newly formed coalition, they did support it. The 2009 parliamentary election of Iceland will, uh, will probably remain in history as one of the most uh, important elections of our lifetimes, I'm gonna assume. The Independence Party suffered its worst loss in its entire history. The Progressive Party gained uh, three seats, if I remember correctly, but the Social Democrats and the Left Greens were the ones that really shined through. They both got the highest percentage of popular vote that they had ever received in their entire history, and Johanna Seuradotir formed a coalition government with the Left Greens, and they had a pretty tall order on their lists of things that they wanted to complete during their term. They wanted to fix the Icelandic economy, obviously. They wanted to, uh, to uh, have uh, the trust in uh, Icelandic politics be regained by the public, very tall order. They wanted Iceland to start a process of possibly joining the EU. And they wanted to uh, get people back working again. And to be fair to them, they did, ex they did succeed in uh, getting the economy back on track and they did get a lot of people back to work. But the other two promises that they made, mm, yeah, not quite. 
One of the Progressive Party's biggest guiding principles is that they are heavily opposed to Iceland joining the EU. So when Sigmund Dr. David Gunnlaugsson, as the leader of the Progressive Party, found itself uh, the de facto leader of the uh, opposition to Johanna's government, he had uh, plenty of ammunition again, uh, to use against them. Because even though the Social Democrats had won a major victory, the majority of the population still did, def did not want to actually join the EU. It should be noted that the Left Greens themselves are also anti-joining the EU, but, you know, political compromises are the name of the game. Þessi ríkistjórn leitar upp í hvert einasta mál sem er til þess fallið að kljúfa þjóðina. Og hvernig var þetta hérna í byrjun ás 2009? Þá var gert tilraun. Vegna þess að framsóknarmenn trúðu því að við þær aðstæður sem þá voru ríkjandi og er að miklu leiti ríkjandi enn, þá hlytu allir að vinna saman að sameinlugum markmiðum og auðljósum markmiðum. Attempting to join the EU may quite possibly be the single worst political decision that any Icelandic political party has ever made, period. It made it so that the Social Democrats in the 2013 election, as well as their fellow Left Greens, lost in an absolute landslide, making it possible for the Progressive Party and the Independence Party to form a government. Surprisingly, the uh, Progressive Party and the Independence Party ended up winning the exact um, same amount of seats in Parliament, 19 seats each, which gave them a, a majority of 38 out of the 63 Senate seats, Parliament seats, sorry. And now, standing in the limelight, uh, leading this new coalition government as Prime Minister was 38-year-old Sigmund David Gunnlaugsson the youngest Prime Minister in Iceland since 1934. The first two, three years of uh, Sigmundur's time as Prime Minister were incredibly uninventful, I dare even say incredibly mundane. Iceland did pull out of the EU negotiations in 2015 and the government for the most part continued many of the policies that had been set forth by the previous administration in order to keep the economy growing and get more people to work. Unemployment rates continued to uh, slowly but surely uh, uh, grow even lower and, to, and there was also a huge tourism boom which helped uh, the economy a lot. So the situation for Seymour at the time seemed to be, well, going pretty well. But then, in March 2016, one of the largest data leaks in all of human history took place with the release of the Panama Papers. And they featured, among very many uh, rich and powerful people, one Sigmund David Gunnlaugsson, Prime Minister of Iceland. With Sigmund's own personal uh, reputation being at stake, he attempted damage control by taking part in a highly publicized and now rather infamous uh, media interview. After answering some questions rather awkwardly, the interview ended with him storming out uh, before uh, the most serious, quest serious questions could be brought forth. Ef þú ert að spyrja mig um hluti sem ég er ekki einu sem búin að kynna mér Þú seldir þinn hluti félaginu fyrir 1 dollara Nei, nei, nei Þú ert að spyrja mig um einhverju tóma vitlisu Þú plata mig í viðtala og fyrst og fyrst Ég er með undirskiptina í hennar sekundur Já, viltu sjá hana? Já, ég meina Þú ert að spyrja mig um hluti sem ég er ekki einu sem búin að kynna mér Þú seldir þinn hluti félaginu fyrir 1 dollara Nei, nei, nei Þú ert að spyrja mig um einhverju tóma vitlisu Þú plata mig í viðtala og fyrst og fyrst Ég er með undirskiptina í the following day, between 15 and 20,000 people showed up outside of Parliament in order to protest and to demand the resignation of uh, Sigmundur's entire cabinet. Prime Minister Sigmundur David now had no choice but to turn to President Olavur Ragnar Grímsson and ask him to terminate his cabinet. Now, in effect, this would mean that, obviously, snap elections would be held, but Prime Minister Sigmund would be allowed to continue to stay in power until after the election results were in. However, President Olavur 
refused to uh, to end the cabinet, thus forcing, thus in effect uh, forcing Sigmund to continue as prime minister, which he of course could not do because basically everybody was opposed to him continuing. So he resigned as prime minister and appointed one Sigurd Rinki Johansson to take over as prime minister and uh, the government later announced that they would speed up the next election and it was to be held uh, at the end of 2016. Down goes Sigmundur David Gunlaugsen. Down goes Sigmundur David Gunlaugsen. Now, why exactly Sigmundur chose Sigurdur as his successor, I'm not quite sure of, but it most definitely ended up biting him in the ass later, because on October, October 2nd, this same year, several weeks before the election, Sigurdur Inki was elected as the next chairman of the Progressive Party. Til að stjórnmálaflokkur nái hitli kjósanda verður að ríkja tröst. Fólk verður að hafa þá tilfinningunni að viðkomandi flokki sé treystandi fyrir stjórn landsins. However, the Progressive Party still suffered greatly in the election, suffering one of its worst defeats in its entire history. Actually, the worst defeats of its entire political history. Coalition talks after the 2016 election proved to be extremely long and excruciating and in the end the leader of the Independence Party, Bjarni Benediktsson, formed a coalition administration with the two newcomer parties in parliament, Bright Future and Reform. Sigmund David took the loss of the party chairman's position extremely hard. So hard in fact this is that it is rumored that once losing to, Sim to Sigurdur, he stormed out of the building without uh, speaking to any reporters. And I've also heard, now I haven't had this confirmed by anyone, but I've heard that uh, he avoided Sigurdur at all costs, not wanting to engage in any conversations with him, except, absolutely, except when absolutely pretty much forced to. So yeah, he was pretty bitter. The administration of Bjarni Benediktsson was, however, not to last. It completely fell apart on September 15, 2017, and a snap election was announced to be held within the next uh, sec six weeks. Just eight days after it was announced that a new election would take place, Sigmund Durdavid stepped forward and surprised everybody by announcing that he was gonna run in the election as the chairman of a newly founded split party that had split from the Progressive Party, which he named the Center Party. Various members of the Progressive Party left the party in order to join the new Center Party, and uh, when the election results were in, uh, the Center Party and the Progressive Party had gotten the, almost the exact amount of uh, popular votes, the center party beating out the progressives with a mere 0.2 percent. However, the progressive party still managed to get one senate seat more than the center party. This has something to do with uh, with uh, how many uh, people live in each constituency and how many senators there are for, uh, how many parliamentarians there are for each constituency, and basically the progressive party won bigger in the smaller rural constituencies. Anyway, now it is of course impossible to know exactly what would have happened if uh, Sigmund had never created his center party. Uh, it is safe to assume that uh, a lot of the people who voted for the center party would have otherwise voted for the progressive party, but I really doubt that uh, all of them would have voted for the progressive party. I know a lot of people who had never voted before or barely po follow politics who did vote for the center party simply because they seemed uh, fresh and new. However, however, still, a lot of people would have otherwise voted for the Progressive Party ended up voting for the Center Party, thus splitting the Progressive Party vote and therefore paving the way for the Left Greens to become the second largest party in Parliament and thus, in a way, Sigmund David himself had made it possible for one of his uh, old political rivals to get into the position that he was seeking, which is of course becoming Prime Minister.
Basically, one could make the argument that Sigmund David paved the way for Katrin Jakobsdottir to become Prime Minister. So yeah, the Left Greens, the Independence Party and the Progressive Party formed the current administration with the, which we have, with the Centre Party being in the opposition. Now, unfortunately for everybody involved, uh, this is however not where the controversy ends. You see, in November of last year, uh, Sigmund Turtavid and three other members of the Center Party, as well as uh, four MPs from the newly created People's Party, were recorded as they were having drinks at a bar in Reykjavik, where they made a lot of very sexist and dispiriting remarks against mainly women in Parliament. Now, I've already made a whole video about the whole Klöstur affair, so I don't want to go into it with many details. However, what I will say is that among many other female MPs that they uh, spoke of in some very crude, sexualized manner, they spoke very ill of one Lilia Alfredsdottir. Lilia, who is now the vice chairman of the Progressive Party, had of course at one point been a very close associate of Sigmundur. And naturally, uh, uh, she felt very much betrayed by these remarks, and uh, in December of last year she made a highly publicized uh, media interview where she basically, well, defended her honor, as she should have. And this, uh, and this uh, quickly made Lilia into probably the biggest household name in politics right now. There's even been a lot of talks that she might quite possibly in future replace Sigurd Rinki as the chairman of the Progressive Party, but you know, only time will tell. Now, I myself think that uh, Sigurd Rinki stands much stronger in his position than anybody gives him credit for currently, but like I said, time will tell. According to recent polls, it is very dubious whether or not the Centre Party will make it uh, back into Parliament in the next election. In order to get, uh, get members elected to Parliament, a political party must get at least 5% uh, of the total popular vote. And the uh, Centre Party is currently, uh, according to polls, kind of swinging around the 5% mark. So. That was a brave story of Sigmund David Gunnlaugsson, arguably, or I'd actually say very unarguably, the most controversial figure of Icelandic politics as of right now. He is of course still fairly young uh, for a politician, uh, turning 44 this March, so chances are we may see a lot of him in the future, but chances are he has uh, burned the last bridge he could possibly burn behind him and he may fade into obscurity. Only time will tell. Maybe he'll run for president someday in the future. I wouldn't be that surprised by that. Though I'm not giving you any ideas, Sigmund. You will not win. But you know, if, if you wanna, but if it makes you happy, go ahead, knock yourself out. You know, prepare for another disappointment. Now I have often made it clear in the in these videos in the past that I'm not a big fan of Sigmund David. But this video wasn't just made to bash Sigmund. I mean. I don't have to, uh, well, I, everybody has already passed him at some point, so I'm not adding any more fi uh, fuel to any fire here. I just uh, thought, uh, uh, despite everything, his story is still interesting and is worth telling. Because the most interesting aspect for me is not Sigmund himself, but how everything he has done has affected so many other people in, in a variety of ways. Sigurd Rinki obviously would never would have been Prime Minister, probably never would have been uh, party chairman, and now Lilia Sigurdardottir has become a household name, and uh, obvious, and of course uh, Katrin Jakobsdottir probably would never would have become Prime Minister, at least not this early. He, bas he basically changed the whole uh, normal order of succession, if you will, by his mere presence. He took the charts in the aftermath of one of the most uh, unstable political situations in all of Iceland, and he made history. And that is something nobody can take, for, take away from him. For better or for worse, he will go down in history as one of Iceland's most controversial political figures. Anyway, I am Johan Phoenix, you just watch the Saratikal, and stay cool. Also, please subscribe.
but mainly stay cool, because if you subscribe, then you are cool. <laughs> Das Radikal!